Mark Bielan from Search Lab. This is Suds and Search. I'm joined today by Rod Holmes and Ben Hicks of Chicago Style SEO. We're at uh, Half Acre Brewery in Bowmanville. Um, I understand that Chicago Style SEO may be changing the brand and uh, that there may be an announcement here. Yeah, so hopefully by the time everybody sees this, we will no longer be Chicago Style SEO. Uh, we are we have been in the process for quite some time and we're about to pull the trigger on changing our name to Pilot Digital Marketing. All right, and what, how did that decision come about? How did you decide to change the name and why Pilot? Um, we decided to change the name because it's been a great name for us. Uh, when we, we're, we just celebrated our 10th uh, anniversary and 10 years ago, it made a lot of SEO sense right. to be have our keywords in our name. Now we have offices in Cincinnati as well as Chicago. So we're not just in Chicago. Uh, we don't just have clients in Chicago. We have clients all over the world and we don't just do SEO. Uh, mm -hmm. So we really feel like the name is probably at this point holding us back. So we're going okay. with a more branded name instead of a keyword focus. Got it. All right, got it. And, and uh, how'd you come up with Pilot? So Pilot, um, we were thinking about how when people start to dream, like business people, when you start to dream about where I want to be in five years um, and you're making these plans, just like making a trip, at some point you're probably going to need a pilot to help get you to where you want to go on your journey. So uh, that's where the name came from, Pilot. That's a little sense of the world. I will tell you from, as a person who's worked in Chicago, digital agencies and now owns one, we've always kind of looked up at those Chicago SEO agency terms and seen Chicago style SEO <laughs> ranking usually one, two or three, very high. Uh, ben, is there any any concern that, you know, your own positioning may drop with this brand change or oh. did that go into factor into the decision? There's certainly some concern. Um, <laughs> you know, I think as we've worked on the new brand and been more excited about it and we're really excited about the new website, it's fan we're just really pleased with how it looks. But so that's kind of distracting us from the from the actual moment. Yeah. And the closer we get to the redirects, when we have to redirect Chicago style to our new domain, I think, you know, the nerves will definitely start <laughs> right. settling in. And I'll be, you know, nervously watching Search Console to see what I'm happens. Sure you will. Yeah. Uh, so there's absolutely some concern. Perfect. And then you're you're on the sales end. How much inbound traffic does those, does those uh, Chicago? Am I overstating because I'm jealous of you guys, or is that, <laughs> a, is that are um, you are you getting most of your leads inbound these days? All, all your leads. Yeah. yeah. So I get when I when I'm talking to people, and uh, they say, "Well, these guys called me," and I'm like, <laughs> "Why would you work with a digital marketing <laughs> agency, an inbound agency that called you? Shouldn't?" you be calling them. Right. So at this point, all of our leads uh, are either inbound or referral. That's we don't great. really do anything outbound. Oh. And congratulations on 10 years. That's quite an accomplishment. Thank you, you. Uh, you. That would mean you started the business at maybe the worst time in you know, like our lifetime to start a business. So congratulations. Yeah, 2009, right? <laughs> right when everything imploded. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, our topic, uh, our topic today is uh, about link building or lack thereof. Okay. Um, ben, one of the things I noticed with, uh, I went on your blog, 2018, it's, it's sort of a proud statement from Chicago Style SEO that you're going to make really great content. Uh, you're going to do, take care of all the technical aspects, but link building is not, it's a choice you guys have made. It's not going to be mm -hmm. um, a decision. Uh, it's not going to be a focal point of your efforts. Um, what went into that decision? Can you tell me about how you guys have chosen sure. to, to take this path? Yeah, I mean, when I when I took over the department about five years ago, we, we still did link building. It wasn't our primary tactic, um, but it was a big part of what we did. Um, and as I started to take ownership of the SEO team and guide our practices, our experience was we got better results from not focusing on link building. You know, we had successes where a local client would be outranking national competitors on terms and, you know, have a much lower domain authority. Mm. Um, plus we hated link building. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's a, it's a process that it's not very enjoyable doing the outreach, writing a pitch email, getting the right content in place, 
I think the content that you write when you're trying to do link building can be re really valuable. I, you know, I don't dispute that. I don't dispute the value of link building. I think, you know, there are so many levers we can pull in the SEO world. There's so many ranking signals. We're a technical shop. We have our development team. Um, so we have so many other options we, we resort to before we get to the link building um, tactic, really. Yeah. Um, we, we do some consulting. So say if a client wants to build links, we'll do the link research, put together like a portfolio of potential opportunities. Um, but they usually will do that in-house for okay. the most part. Um, so it, it, it has been a while since we've actually done it as a service for clients. It's free up so much. Like one of the things I thought about was if you're not doing all these cold emails to people yeah. and coming up with a perfect uh, sort of pitch, yeah, this frees up your time to do other things. It does. So what, what, it's got to be nice if this isn't because nobody does like nobody likes that right stuff. right it's not fun no. but what does it allow you to do instead for your clients well we play hacky sack all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's only yeah. after uh, <laughs> we we actually we're, we're moving into more more you know a holistic approach to optimization so it gives us more freedom to pour through analytics we're doing cool things with data studio and BigQuery. you know adding new tactics to our arsenal and really Try to understand what's driving a website's performance. You know, mm -hmm. the, there was an algorithm update a couple weeks ago in mid March, and for the most mm -hmm. part, it didn't affect our clients positively or negative, negatively. There were a couple positive swings, which is great to see. There was one negative swing. You know, and because we're not spending time link building, you know, our time for those situations is pouring through the data, trying to understand what's going on, why. What do we need to be doing um, and going from there? So we do spend, you know, probably 25% of our time, 30% of our time in analytics. Um, I like to think up, think that we come up with some pretty fun ideas mm. for our clients' websites, whether that's improving their funnel, um, coming up with a better form or a better um, call to action, um, really anything to help our clients' business. I think. SEO is really important uh, to drive traffic, but you know, if you can help the business with their overall marketing, their overall content, um, whether that's email, chat, come up with different ways to improve their sales funnel. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, Red, do you have any clients that you just, one of the things before we got on, on the air, um, you guys were talking about, you really understand who you're targeting in terms of your customer. And then so there's somebody who called in and you said, well, we're just not a good fit for you. Is there Are there any sort of markets with not being link builders? Can you just, all right, no attorneys, no, you know, no mortgage brokers, no, none of these right. ones that are like super competitive. Does it change your sales approach at all? No, not really. Um, yeah. We feel that we can compete with anybody. Uh, if they're doing link building um, and we're not, we can, we're, what we do is still, competitive with them. Right. Um, as Ben said, there are so many, so many different ways to, to make progress that link building is not the only one. Uh, it, in what I'm reading and probably what a lot of people watching this are reading are saying link building and the, the importance of links is ever decreasing mm -hmm. where user interaction data is becoming more and more important. So, right. I talk a lot about conversion rate optimization being an SEO tool. Um, if we can get people to stay longer on a page, scroll deeper onto a page, have more pages per uh, session, uh, you know, longer time per session, uh, we we don't need the links. We, this is, that this helps. This is why we're making videos like this one because we want people on the page longer and uh, yeah, they come to <laughs> exactly. our website and exactly. keep sticking around for a while, <laughs> yeah. sending good good user signals. So. Yep. Um, and then do you guys, uh, you guys still produce content for clients as well, right? We do, yeah. After the content's produced, how do you promote it or what, what sort of things do you do in terms of getting that out there? Well, you know, it, it varies by client how we promote the content that we've created for them. Um, in some instances for smaller businesses, we do manage their social media. We'll schedule the post okay. for them. That's that's more of an exception. We, do, we have a few examples of that. Um, we have... A few other clients were doing their email as well. So we're putting the email blast together, scheduling that, uh, coordinating the social media. Um, I mean, that's basically 
it. It's it, it comes down to if they want to promote it or they want to pay us to promote right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. They right. we have some clients who are like, we know how to press send on emails and we know how to do <laughs> Facebook, so we'll take care of that. You yeah. you just write the yeah. stuff because we don't want to do that. Sure. Um, it, what what other services? So you we're talking SEO here, but you said you guys do a, a lot of other things. What are some of the you had mentioned before this? Yeah. You're you're into YouTube pre-roll. You're into that. Uh, yep. So what are we, some of the other hot, hot services? For so Skyrim? we've got three main areas: SEO, and in SEO we do technical, we do local, and we do organic. Okay. Uh, and then in the PPC world, uh, we're a Google Premier partner, so we do everything Google, uh, search, display, and YouTube. Uh, okay. And then uh, we also do uh, Bing when okay. it makes sense. Right. And we also then do social media uh, PPC uh, okay. on all platforms. Uh, and then the third area that we work in is web development. About a third of our business is web okay. development. Okay. Um, people come to us for SEO. And we have to often break the bad news to them that their website is not <laughs> SEOable. Right. And, yeah. and so when we started out, we didn't intend to have web development, but we found we just had to. So oh, we, uh, we do web development and people come to us for web development if they want to play the SEO game. If they just want a brochure, there's yeah, lots yeah. of better options than us. Right. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the algorithm update last month. Mm -hmm. um, this is, the, the way I heard it described, this was a, a sort of second iteration of the, the medic update from last mm -hmm. fall. Yeah. Um, we're hearing things like eat a lot. Um, we're hearing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just your, your take on the, the update and, and what is Google trying to tell us with these things? You know, I think circling back to how that uh, the conversation with link building, I think the algorithm change is a testament to how how they value other things and how relevancy is such a huge factor. And if you can get your on-page signal just right, if you have quality content, if it's unique, trustworthy, um, you have a really good shot at performing well in any given search results page. Okay. What other ways can you? If I wanted to improve the authority of a client's website, what are some ways I could do that without building links? So what, what is, reviews come to mind or? Uh, reviews. That's kind of local though. Yeah, yeah, and I do work in a local yeah. space yeah. more than you do. But yeah, yeah, I mean, reviews for a local client are really important. They're really important in the e-commerce world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think authority is a really tough thing to nail down. I think when, when a user comes to your website, you have to seem like a real company. You have to seem like real people work there. I mean, I'm sure we've all been to a website. You just get a weird feeling about it. Like, who yeah. are these people? What What do they do? Why, Where are they? Why would I order <laughs> right. something from them? I mean, I know I came across this backpack I want to buy, um, but is it is it okay for me to put my credit card information in? Right. So I, I really think it's a feeling you have to muster, and it's really hard to pin down how to get that across on the website. Yeah, um, very, very much your... your toggling between your right brain and your left brain here, Alex. You're into the analytics world yeah, so much, you said yeah. at the beginning, and now you're talking about brand and your message and all yeah. these things. You, you, that's what makes this job great, though. I think yeah. you kind of have to, yeah, have to work with both. Mm -hmm. the, the last thing I, I was going to ask you, we, um, so I mentioned we're trying to hit, do more video, keep people on pages longer. And, Very uh, smart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And we do we do seminars in our office and we film those and mm -hmm. we uh, we have a bunch of we take the video this long and we chop it up into pieces and mm -hmm. we're trying to figure this out. What other strategies do you have for keeping people on page, um, improving dwell time, and um, how how can how can we do better for our clients? I guess. I mean, video is a great way. <laughs> I, I agree with your approach. I think we don't do enough video, so I commend you for putting the effort <laughs> in. It's a really tough medium uh, to get mm -hmm. off the ground and, and moving. Um, as far as some other other practices, we're really big on one readability. How is the content written? Um, there's some great books on that topic. Uh, if I could remember off the top of my head, I would talk about them. <laughs> um, I can't even see the book. I can't think of it. Readability is really important. Also, layout is probably the most important thing. You know, getting a nice image, breaking the page up with images. Not too many. You know, you don't want to crush your page load time with a bunch of stupid cat gifs. Um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So using plenty of headings, small paragraphs, 
large font size is really important, which is great for accessibility too, not just, you know, time on page. Bulleted lists. Um, bulleted lists, things like that. So, you know, when you look at a page, you think, okay, the content, is it good? But how is it, is it, can I scan it? Because users, you know, we're busy. You, you see a headline, you like, you're interested, and then you just start scrolling until you see the part that you care about. Um, but, you know, beyond that, if we have a, a page that's really important, like a landing page, and we're wondering why are people leaving this page so quickly, we'll use a tool like Hotjar to get some session recording data or a heat map or click map, something like that, so we can get a little bit more qualitative data behind the, because, you know, in analytics, there's no story. Your bounce rate's 83% and your time on page is 35 seconds. I mean, you could make a lot of assumptions, um, but until you know what people are doing when they're on the, you, you know, you'll just be making your, your best guess. Yeah. So. And I love, the, the longer I do this, the more I'm like into, you know, old school copywriting yeah. lessons. Yeah. Just like we, Absolutely. in our office now, we have all the, we, we just redid it and we have all these old timey ads. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And it's like the web pages of the past. This is yeah, the yeah, idea. yeah. And some of this writing is just like, it's the same things we're talking about now, calls to action, yeah. unique selling propositions, all the stuff we're doing on web pages. They were doing in the fifties. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are really hilarious, and some of them are uh, some of them yeah. are just like I think really good. Um, I think copyright. The more I do, the more I've been around this business, I'm like, let's go backwards and see what mm -hmm. what well, they Google's were doing. Kind of pushing things that way. I mean, yeah. they're rewarding they're rewarding good content. I mean, yes. that's the whole point of their algorithm is to try to reward good content. And so we find that if you produce good content, you do get rewarded. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I want to thank you guys for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. Is, is there uh, anything more that we can tell people about uh, pilot digital marketing or, or anything so more, hopefully anywhere when, else they can find you? Yep. Yeah. So uh, hopefully when this launches, you'll find us at pilotdigital.com. Uh, and social media wise, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so give us a shout out on our website. Fill out a form, join our email list. Give us some feedback. What do you think? All right, yeah. terrific. We'd love to hear from you. It's not going to be a normal website. Yep. It looks a little different. And you guys are staying in the neighborhood. You're going to stay in uh, North Center for we're, the foreseeable we're future? Ravenswood. Uh, Ravenswood. And, yeah. Yep, we are we're staying in Ravenswood. Mm -hmm. Don't need to go spend the money to be closer to Google in the West Loop. Well, isn't there like... A, you, and there's a lot better beer up here. I was gonna say. I was gonna <laughs> right. say a, a lot, lot better beer. A lot of beer options. This is your your first beer in how long? Two years. I appreciate you. Very restrictive <laughs> diet. I know. I appreciate you breaking the rules for us on, yeah. on Suds and yeah, Search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so breaking the rules. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I. I I'm, yes. Ben, <laughs> ben, you've got a wine glass of beer there. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's it's a good beer. Uh, <laughs> it's a sour, which you know not everybody's thing. It's but, the name? The Tracker mixed culture beer. I've never heard that beer type before, but I'm excited to try it. Really good beer, and this fancy glass, it tastes even better out of it. it <laughs> smells great. You right, was making funny that you need a pinky up. <laughs> you know, I'm worried it'll tumble over and shatter on the ground if I drink it like that. All right, we've refilled our glasses, and <laughs> I am joined by Eric from Half Acre. Thanks for uh, your time. And tell us a little bit about the brewery, where we are, and the kind of beers you guys brew. Absolutely. Uh, so you, so you guys are drinking uh, two of our our mainstay beers. Pony is our year-round pilsner. Gone away is our uh, fall and winter IPA that we make, and then Tracker is a new mixed culture uh, wild fermentation beer or sour beer. Uh, right now we're standing at our Balmoral location, which is at 2050 West Balmoral. Uh, we're in the Bowmanville neighborhood. We opened up this tap room about two years ago. Um, in, in September of 2017. Is that right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, we opened the tap room in September of 2017. Um, and we've been serving beer ever since. What kind of beers is Half Acre known for, you guys? Yeah, Half Acre is mostly known for our hoppy beer. So Daisy Cutter is our flagship pale ale. Uh, this year we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of Daisy Cutter. We're putting it in 12 ounce cans for the first time. So you can see the grocery stores and chains, you'll see 12 ounce, 12 packs for the first time. Um, but hoppy beer is kind of our thing. Um, you know, with Daisy Cutter, Pale Ale, we were one of the first breweries, we are the first brewery in Illinois to put craft beer in a can. So kind of been riding that wave for a long time. I'm almost all of our year round offerings are hop forward. So 
Pony Pilsner, obviously very aggressively happy mm -hmm. for a Pilsner beer. So. Yeah. All right, one last time, I want to say thank you to Half Acre for your hospitality and for hosting us here on Suds and Search. Thanks to Rod Holmes and Ben Hicks from Pilot Digital Marketing. It's going to be hard to say that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to this. Say. So, yeah, so, guys, cheers. cheers. Thanks for being on Suds and Search. Thank you very much. Thank you.